Hello everyone, welcome back to the May issue of Authentic Culture Magazine. So today I want to discuss with you, and I'm not going to be preaching, but I just kind of want to teach how I do my daily devotionals every morning on my Instagram. So today I want to talk about your body being a temple. So I have three verses that I want to discuss and then share a tiny bit of my own personal testimony. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, so the first verse I want to discuss is Romans 12.1, and it says, and I'm reading out of the NLT, by the way. It says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Okay, and then the next verse I want to read is 1 Corinthians 3.16, and that says, Don't you realize that all together, you are all together the temple of God and the spirit that lives in you? And then if I go one step further, it says, God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple, for God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. And then the verse that I really want to focus on is going to be 1 Corinthians 6, 18 and 19. And again, I'm reading out of the NLT. So it says, run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. Ooh, that was a lot. <laughs> okay, so I love this verse because first off, it's so um, convicting for me. And not that, not the sex part, I'm not having sex. I've been celibate or abstinent um, seven years. But the part that is convicting for me is um, just the part that says, your body does not belong to yourself. Your body belongs to God. Your body is something that, um, it's, it's almost like if someone gave you like, let's just say a house. So you're living in this house, right? You're living in it. And then someone says like, you know what? I'm going to give you this house. This is your house to keep. Or what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that. So this is your house. However, it's not yours to have. So they're giving you this house, like you can rent it, but you're not having to pay for the house, but it still belongs to someone else. I hope this is making sense. So although, yes, this is your house, you know no one's gonna come and like change the decor or anything like that. No one's just gonna stop by unexpectedly. It's still technically not your house. So you still wanna treat it as, as such because at any moment, someone can take that house back. So it's the same with our body. Um, this is a temporary temple that God has given me. So I have to take care of this temple well. And I wanted to reference the other verses just because um, when people think your body's a temple, they think only of this particular verse. Um, run away from sexual sin because basically it's saying like don't have sex because you know all the strongholds and all that fun stuff that it builds up with sex. So I think a lot of people use that when they're using this verse. However, I like to say your body is a temple and that means everything. So that means what you're watching, what you're eating, what you're listening to, what you're putting on your body. So we have to think of this in a bigger, bigger aspect. So if your body is God's temple, um, and I'm not saying I'm against tattoos. I'm not saying I'm against piercings. I think you can do what you want with your body. Maybe you need a couple more orna ornaments in your temple than most. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm not trying to, um, I'm not here to debate and tell you like, oh, the Bible says this, whatever. None of that is like a hell or heaven or hell issue. But what I want to discuss is the things that we're doing with our body. So let's start with food, for example. What we put into our body um, needs to be good because it's a temple. So we can't expect to put a bunch of junk inside of our body and then produce something good. Because if you sit around and you eat a bunch of junk, then you will produce junk. You'll be lazy, you'll be tired. Um, it'll show out on your face and it might show on your body size. Um, whatever that looks like for each individual person. I know we're all different. But the same with what you're listening to or what you're watching. If you're constantly watching something that's 
degrading or disgusting or nasty or something that's just not of God, you're ruining that temple because you're supposed to keep your temple holy. And this is why me personally, I don't listen to secular music. Um, I'll listen to something old, don't get me wrong. I will listen to, I don't know, something old school like Michael Jackson, something like that. But the newer music that's on the radio, I literally, I cannot. And I always, whenever I say this to people, I sound like my dad because he used to always tell us like, oh, rap is da da da, you know, whatever. But nowadays I'm literally like, oh my gosh, this is garbage for me. This like I'm suffering listening to it when I get in other people's cars. So I don't listen to secular music and I don't listen to secular music just because my body is a temple. So I don't want that kind of stuff coming in. Um, besides, and I've talked about this on my Instagram, there are some things in secular music, if you really sit and listen, you're like, did he just say, and I'm not even talking about just like about sex, there's a lot of like underground messages about the devil, and I'm like, I just don't want that seeping into my subconscious. Um, so I'm always on alert when I'm listening to the music, when I was still listening to it, and it got to a point where I was like, I don't want to just be this alert on every single thing that I listen to, so I'm just going to stop listening to it. So I only listen to worship, and occasionally I'll listen to something old if I'm um, like at my sister's house or something like that. But um, I, I mention that too because I am the type, and this could be just me person, because I know some people get convicted differently. I know some people think you can't drink because you're Christian. Some people think you can. I'm not here to judge anyone, but for me when it comes to listening to secular music, if it's not some type of underground, like demonic kind of message that not many people will hear or see or get, the stuff is just downright disgusting. And if I'm trying to stay on my celibacy walk, I'm trying to, or my abstinence, whatever you want to call it, if I'm trying to stay clean, I'm trying to stay pure, I'm trying to run from sexual sin, I can't listen to music that discuss sexual sin. I won't listen to music that is talking degrading about a woman or a man or um, themselves. I, I'm not going to listen to that because that isn't putting something good inside of me. We know that these kind of things, it gets stuck in your subconscious and then eventually you want it. Um, and that's the same with watching a show. Like if you're watching a show about, um, let's just say a woman who wants to date millionaire men, eventually you're going to want to date a millionaire man because it's getting in your subconscious. Now, I know I'm going off subject a tiny bit, but I'm just saying the things that you put in subconsciously are things that um, come back out. So that is why I don't listen to secular music. That is why I am trying to eat cleaner just because I want to keep my body as a temple. And like it says in Romans 12.1, that we already read, it says, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living, holy sacrifice. I want God to know that this temple is me. Keep. I'm trying to keep this temple as clean as I can and keep the things away from it. I don't want to be a part of, um, what am I trying to say? I don't want this temple to basically fall apart, if you will. <laughs> I want this temple to stay clean. I want this temple to be a sacrifice to God. I want when he returns on that last day, I want him to tell me, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want him to say that to me. And I know 100% um, I can't say that right now. There's still some things I'm cutting out now. There's still some things I have to stop doing. And this is why I chose this message because I can easily preach from something that I got over, but what's the fun in that? If I'm not learning something, I don't ever wanna appear that I'm higher than anyone. Um, so I am learning this at the same time. I'm speaking to myself, if no one else. I am the one, if no one else is here, if there are no 99s. Um, but yes, I just wanted to share really quickly, this um, body of ours is a temple, and that goes with what we wear. Um, certain things I just refuse to wear like I used to. Um, I know I have a nice body, but I don't think my body's for everyone, so I'm not going to just wear something that shows everything. I want to leave something for my husband. Um, and I'm not judging anyone who decides to show off their stuff. Like I said, everyone gets convicted differently. But as for me, I see this as my body is a temple. And in every aspect, I need to um, clothe it well. I need to cover it well and do the things that God has for me. So hopefully this message was 
um, convicting in a good way. I don't want to scare anyone off, but I want you guys to be stirred up in the spirit to understand like, oh crap, okay, this is something I got to do. This is something I need to work on. So hopefully this was something that got you stirred up thinking about the different ways that you can um, keep a good, clean temple. Um, I will be back next month with maybe a part two of this. Maybe I'll go into this a tiny bit or hit me on my Instagram and I will share more about this. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in.